Hey everyone, in today's video, we're gonna talk about bipolar and related disorders. So bipolar one disorder is also known as manic depressive disorder. It's a type of mental disorder that's characterized by extreme shifts in mood, energy, and activity levels. Individuals with bipolar one disorder experience periods of extreme elation and excitement, known as mania, as well as periods of depression. The DSM-5 is the diagnostic manual used for mental health professionals. It provides the following criteria for bipolar 1. The presence of at least one episode of mania, which is characterized by elated or irritable moods, increased energy or activity levels, and changes in thinking and behavior. The individual may also experience episodes of depression which are characterized by a persistent low mood, loss of interest or pleasure in activities, and changes in thinking and behavior. The individual's functioning is significantly impaired in bipolar one disorder. In order to diagnose bipolar one disorder, a mental health professional will typically conduct a thorough assessment, including a medical history, physical exam, and psychological evaluation. The assessment may also include standardized tools such as the Mini International Neuropsych Interview or the Mood Disorder Questionnaire. Pharmacological treatments for bipolar 1 disorder may include the use of mood stabilizers such as lithium or valproate, as well as antidepressants and atypical antipsychotics. It is important to note that with antidepressants, if someone is bipolar and they're in a depressive episode and you give them antidepressants, it can throw them into a mania. This is why it's important that these medications are prescribed by a licensed prescriber. These medications can help to reduce the frequency and intensity of mood episodes and may also improve other symptoms such as anxiety or sleep disturbances. Non-pharmacological treatments such as cognitive behavioral therapy or interpersonal therapy may also be effective in helping individuals with bipolar 1 to better manage their symptoms and improve their overall functioning. One interesting fact about bipolar 1 disorder is that it's often associated with creativity and artistic ability. Many famous artists and writers such as Vincent van Gogh and Ernest Hemingway are believed to have had bipolar 1 disorder. Additionally, research suggests that there may be a genetic component to the disorder as it tends to run in families. In conclusion, bipolar 1 disorder is a mental disorder characterized by extreme shifts in mood, energy, and activity levels. It's diagnosed using DSM-5 criteria and can be assessed using a variety of tools and techniques. Treatment may include the use of medications and non-pharmacological interventions such as CBT. Although more research is needed to better understand this disorder, it's clear that it can have a significant impact on an individual's quality of life. The second diagnosis we are gonna cover is bipolar two disorder. So bipolar two disorder is a mental health condition that is characterized by periods of depression and periods of hypomania. So remember in bipolar one, you have full mania, but in bipolar two, you have something called hypomania. So the energy levels, the grandiosity, all of those things are not as extreme as in mania. So hypomania, you may not be sleeping, you may have more energy than normal, but you aren't in that full blown manic episode. Unlike in bipolar 1 disorder, the hypomanic episodes in bipolar 2 disorder are not as severe and typically do not include psychotic symptoms. According to the DSM-5, the diagnostic criteria for bipolar 2 includes at least one episode of major depression and at least one episode of hypomania. In addition, the individual must not have any episodes of mania or mixed episodes. To assess for bipolar 2 disorder, a healthcare provider must use a variety of tools, or they may use a variety of tools, including structured clinical interviews, self-reporting questionnaires, and psychological assessments. These tools can help to determine the presence and severity of symptoms and rule out other potential causes. Pharmacological treatments for bipolar 2 disorder often include mood stabilizers such as lithium and valproic acid, so similar to bipolar 1, as well as 
atypical antipsychotics such as olanzapine and risperdone, and in some cases, antidepressants may also be just prescribed to help with symptoms of depression. In addition to medication, non-pharmacological treatments for bipolar II can also be effective. This can include things such as cognitive behavioral therapy or dialectical behavioral therapy, as well as lifestyle changes such as regular exercise, good sleep habits, and healthy diet. Some interesting facts about bipolar II disorder include that it is more common in women than in men, and it often first appears in late teenage years or early childhood. In addition, individuals with bipolar II disorder may be at an increased risk of suicide and should be closely monitored for signs of self-harm. Overall, bipolar II disorder is a complex condition that can be challenging to manage, but with proper treatment, individuals with bipolar II disorder can live a fulfilling life and maintain stable moods. It's important for individuals with this condition to work closely with a healthcare provider to find the right treatment. So the next diagnosis we are going to discuss is cyclothymic disorder, also known as cyclothymia. It's a mental health condition that's characterized by periods of hypomania and periods of depression. These mood swings are less severe than those in bipolar 1 or bipolar 2, but they can still cause significant distress and impairment in an individual's life and their ability to function. According to the DSM-5, the diagnostic criteria for cyclothymic disorder include at least two years, or one year in children and adolescents, of numerous periods of hypomania and depression, with no more than two consecutive months without symptoms. In addition, the symptoms must not meet the criteria for major depression, manic, or mixed episode, and the individual must not have any other mental health condition that could explain these symptoms. To assess for cyclothymic disorder, a healthcare provider may use a variety of tools, including structured clinical interviews, self-reported questionnaires, and psychological assessments. These tools can help to determine the presence and severity of symptoms and rule out other potential causes. Pharmacologic treatment for cyclothymic disorder often include mood stabilizers such as lithium and valproic acid, as well as atypical antipsychotics such as olanzapine or risperdone. In some cases, antidepressants may also be prescribed to help with symptoms of depression. In addition to medication, non-pharmacological treatments for cyclothymic disorder can also be effective. These treatments may include psychotherapy, such as cognitive behavioral therapy or dialectical behavioral therapy, as well as lifestyle changes such as exercise, good sleep patterns, and a healthy diet. Some interesting facts about cyclothymic disorder include that it's more common in women than men, and that it often first appears in late teenage years or early adulthood. In addition, individuals with cyclothymic disorder may be at an increased risk of developing bipolar 1 or bipolar 2 later in life. Overall, cyclothymic disorder is a complex condition that can be challenging to manage. With proper treatment, however, individuals with cyclothymic disorder can live fulfilling lives and maintain stable moods. It's important for individuals with this condition to work closely with a healthcare provider to help find the right treatment. The next diagnoses we are going to discuss in the bipolar and mood disorder section of the DSM is other specified bipolar and related disorders. This is a mental health condition that's characterized by symptoms of bipolar disorder that do not meet the full criteria for any specific bipolar diagnoses. This category is used when individuals experience symptoms of bipolar disorder that do not meet the full diagnostic criteria for bipolar one bipolar 2, or cyclothymic disorder. According to the DSM-5, the diagnostic criteria for other specified bipolar and related disorders include the presence of symptoms of bipolar disorder, but the symptoms do not meet the full criteria for any specific bipolar disorder. In addition, the individual must have significant distress or impairment as a result of these symptoms. To assess for other specified bipolar and related disorders, a healthcare provider may use a variety of tools, including structured clinical interviews, self-reported questionnaires, and psychological assessments. 
These tools can help to determine the presence and severity of symptoms and rule out other potential causes. Pharmacological treatments for other specified bipolar and related disorders often includes mood stabilizers such as lithium and valproic acid, as well as atypical antipsychotics such as olanzapine and risperdone. In some cases, antidepressants may also be prescribed to help with symptoms of depression. In addition to medication, non-pharmacologic treatments for other specified bipolar and related disorders can also be effective. These include psychotherapy, such as cognitive behavioral therapy or dialectical behavioral therapy, as well as lifestyle changes, such as regular exercise, good sleep, and a healthy diet. Some interesting facts about other specified bipolar and related disorders includes that it's more common in women than men, and it first appears in the teenage years or early adulthood. In addition, individuals with this condition may be at an increased risk of developing bipolar 1 or bipolar 2 later in life. Overall, other specified bipolar and related disorders is a complex condition that can be challenging to manage, but with proper treatment, individuals with this condition can live a fulfilling life and maintain stable moods. It's important for individuals with this condition to work closely with a healthcare provider to find the right treatment plan. The next diagnosis we're going to discuss is unspecified bipolar and related disorders. This is a mental health condition that is characterized by symptoms of bipolar disorder that do not meet the full criteria for any of the specified bipolar disorders and for which the cause is unknown. This category is used when individuals experience symptoms of bipolar disorder, but does not meet the full diagnostic criteria for any of the specified bipolar disorders and the cause of the symptoms is not clear. According to the DSM-5, the diagnostic criteria for unspecified bipolar and related disorders includes the presence of symptoms of bipolar disorder, but the symptoms do not meet the full criteria for specific bipolar diagnoses and the cause is unknown. In addition, the individual must have significant distress or impairment as a result of the symptoms. To assess for unspecified bipolar and related disorders, a healthcare provider may use a variety of tools, including structured clinical interviews, self-reported questionnaires, and psychological assessments. These tools can help to determine the presence and severity of symptoms and rule out other potential causes. Pharmacological treatments for unspecified bipolar and related disorders often include mood stabilizers such as lithium and valproic acid, as well as atypical antipsychotics such as olanzapine and risperdone. In some cases, antidepressants may also be prescribed to help with symptoms of depression. In addition to medication, non-pharmacological treatments for unspecified bipolar and related disorders can also be effective. These treatments may include psychotherapy, such as cognitive behavioral therapy or dialectical behavioral therapy, as well as lifestyle changes such as regular diet and a healthy exercise routine, as well as a good sleep patterns. Some interesting facts about unspecified bipolar and related disorders include that it's more common in women than men and often first appears in the late teenage years or early adulthood. In addition, individuals with this condition may be at an increased risk of developing bipolar 1 or bipolar 2 later in life. Overall, unspecified bipolar and related disorders is a complex condition that can be challenging to manage. With proper treatment, however, individuals with this condition can live a fulfilling life, maintaining stable moods. It is important for individuals with this condition to work closely with a healthcare provider to find the right treatment plan. All right, and those are all of the disorders in the bipolar and mood disorder section of the DSM-5. So I'll see you guys next time.